All right, so today we're in uh, the last section of chapter six, which is simple interest. Guys, please, please, we're getting started. All right, simple interest. And um, in the real world, interest can either be a good thing or a bad thing, okay? So if you have an idea, I want you to think about it. When can interest be a good thing, Joel? Um, when you have 7% interest, when you're in, when you keep your money in the bank. Yes, interest. okay. Bank, investments, retirement plans, all right? It might be kind of seem like it's something in the far distance for you guys, but when you become adults and you start your careers, okay, you're thinking of retirement plans and savings, and when you invest your money in those things, they generate interest. That's a good thing. All right, someone raise your hand and tell me when interest would be a bad thing or negative thing. Colin? When you're like, when you have to pay something and you're behind, so they charge you like a percentage okay. of what you Right, so like late payments on bills, they always charge that late payment fee, like a 10% payment fee. Your payment was supposed to be $100. Now you got a $110 payment for the exact same payment because you're late. Okay, so that interest. Um, when else would interest be a bad thing? Anybody? Joel? Um, it's sort of the same thing. Like when they don't pay off the credit card. Get yes, credit card debt. You know, that's one of the most common forms of debt in our society is this credit card debt. Why? Because it's so easy. It's so easy. It's just a swipe. We're on Amazon. It's already like saved in our account. All we have to do is the one-click purchases. And we're spending money as a whole, as an American society, that we actually don't have. That's not real money. And so we go into debt. And when we go into debt, we generate interest. The average credit card interest can be anywhere from 10% all the way to 28%. 28%, and that's a lot of money. You're paying 30 cents on the dollar at that point almost. Um, and so that's how people get caught in that vicious cycle of debt. So interest on debt would definitely be a bad thing. Now, mortgages and that type of thing, we can't really help that. You know, I mean, pretty much everybody has a mortgage. But the credit card debt, that's something that we can manage better. Um, all right, so we have a formula, okay? Go ahead and fill in the blanks here what each variable stands for. Okay, so I equals PRT. I stands for interest, how much you make or owe. How much you make or owe. The principal is the starting amount, okay? Um, the initial amount. The rate is our percentage. And then our time is in years. So that's important, time in years. So if I were to give you a value that said six months, you can't plug in six into this formula or it will think six years, okay? It's going to think six years. So how? what value do you think you could plug in that would represent six months? Colin? Like 0. 0.5 years. 0. 0.5. You always divide it by 12, okay? So 6 over 12 I know is 1 half or 0. 0.5. The decimal version is helpful because I, I can multiply that a little easier, Okay. Um, and we're going to explore this whole months thing. So if you see months, you know you have to divide it by 12 and put it into, so that converts it to years, okay? All right, we good on that? Okay. All right, so in example one, in all these examples today, we're going to be solving for different parts of the formula. So in example one, it says you deposit $500 in a savings account that earns 3% simple annual interest per year. What is the balance after three years? So I'm going to use my formula, I equals PRT, okay? Um, and in order to find my balance after three years, it's not going to be the original amount that I invested, because it earned interest. So in order to figure out the final balance, I must first calculate the interest. 500, remember, my principal is my starting amount, how much I initially put in or borrowed. So 500 is my, you want to take a guess? Your, uh, principal. It's my principal. My rate I must, I can't plug in a percent into my formula. Just like with percent equation, I had to convert the percent to a decimal. I have to do it here also. So 3% as a decimal would be what? 
0.03, okay? So we always want to convert those percentages to decimals. And how much time passed? Three years. Three years, okay? So if I multiply 500 times 0 0.03 times 3, I will get the amount of interest. Go ahead and do that multiplication. And again, calculators um, are, are allowed. You don't have to do this by hand, although I know you could. All right. Let's calculate the interest. Okay, so I equals how much? Forty-five dollars. Okay, that's not sad. <laughs> okay, well, maybe, depending on how you look at it. But that's not my ending balance. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to say, well, the five hundred dollars that I initially put in is still there. Okay, so how much is my ending balance? Five hundred forty-five dollars. Yeah, so literally, I just let my money sit there for three years, and now it grew by $45, and I didn't do anything, all right, except just let my money sit in the account. All right, so I want you to do the exact same thing now, but for nine, ooh, nine what? Months. months. So figure out how much of a year nine months is. Okay, so I literally take the same approach, I equals PRT, 500 times my rate, which is still 3%, 0 0.03, times time now, which is 0.75, nine months, nine over 12, reduces to three fourths, 0.75. And when I do that multiplication, what did you get for your interest? $11.25. But that's not my final balance. What do I have to do now? Add it to the 500. Okay, and we're going to add one more thing here. My final balance variable is A. Don't ask me why. I have no idea. Sometimes it's a little odd that a variable would stand for something that the letter really isn't in the word. But final balance, my variable is A in this formula. And uh, it's $511.25. Okay. Um, there actually is another simple interest formula that involves A. Um, in this section, we will not learn it, um, but it is out there. And um, I don't know if we'll revisit it in this class or if it would be next year, um, but there is one that solves for A um, also. All right, example two. Now, in example two, we're just solving for a different part of the formula now. So it says I deposit $1,000 in an account, the account earns $100 simple annual interest in four years. What is the annual interest rate? What is the annual interest rate? So we start off with our formula. Our formula is our framework that we're going to build this equation from I equals PRT. I equals PRT. Remember what principle stands, or P stands for. <laughs> I said it. Principle. R stands for rate, T, time, I stands for interest. So $1,000, which variable do you think that goes in for? It goes in for P, very good. What about 100? I. It goes in for I, very good. I'm solving for the rate, what is the rate? Okay, so I know I'm solving for R, which means I have to know every other part of this formula. 100 equals 1,000 times the rate, times the time in years, so what would that be? Four. It would be four. I can plug in four because it's four years. Had that said four months, I would have had to convert it, okay? So now, is there anything I could simplify over here before I try to solve for R? Four times yeah, four times 1,000, which we could probably do in our head. What's it going to be? 4,000. 4,000 R. All right, kind of gave it away. Next step, I need to solve for R by what? Divide, Divide by 4,000. Guys, that looks a little weird because I think I need to divide by the smaller number. But no, you must divide by the number connected to the variable, both sides, okay? 
So 100 divided by 4,000, you guys remember your trick with the zeros? Okay, two zeros on top, cancel with two zeros on the bottom, one divided by 40, okay, would be what value? 0 0.025. And then, um, Aiden, what did you, um, why did you say 2.5? Because he's trying to write his answer as a rate. This is a decimal. I need to write my answer as a rate, which means it's going to be 2.5%. So he was exactly right. He just kind of skipped the decimal part. Okay. Now, that, that actually brings up a good point. Your calculator is going to give you that value. Could you convert it in your head? Yes. So if you go straight to the answer, that's perfectly fine. Okay. The 2.5. Now, I did see on the test some people would convert within the formula and then try to convert again. So I saw decimals in the wrong places. So just remember, um, remember actually what you're doing. This is a decimal value, so I would convert it to a percentage. Okay, all right, now um, let's see. Let's go on to, we're gonna skip the second rate problem because it's similar to the first. We're going to talk about finding the amount of time. Um, I missed uh, that there was actually a graphic, um, like a, a picture in your book. Um, usually I try to copy these into my PowerPoint, so I need you to turn in your book to page 267. Yeah, to me it looks like a Lego, okay? So now let's read the problem, but imagine they're like stepping stones, okay? Um, and let's read it together. We'll talk about it. Bank offers three savings accounts. So that's why you see three Lego-looking blocks there, okay, on page 267. The simple annual interest rate is determined by the principal. So this does happen, actually, in, in real life, where the more money you actually put into an account, the higher interest it can actually yield, all right? So they would increase the interest rate depending on how much money you were to put in. So um, those three blocks give us the different, we could call them tiers. So how long would it take? All right. I'm not going to tell you on your quiz and test, hey, guys, you're solving for time or you're solving for principle. You have to be able to tell by reading the problem. So when you see something called, that says how long, that's time. Okay. Does it take? an account with a principal of $800. So there I go with $800. Which tier would that fit into according to my little picture there? Which tier? If I'm going to go $800 to invest, which one? The gold, the blue, or the green? It's the blue tier. So what is the interest rate for the blue tier? 2%. So boom, there's my R. Okay, so now I'm ready for my formula. I equals P R T. Do I know interest? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do, because I'm solving for time. I have to know the rest. $100. $100 equals 800 principal. And then because I looked and the blue black was 2%, would I plug in a 2 right there for R? No. No? 0 0.02 for R, and then I don't know time. I don't know how long, all right? So now I'm gonna start to solve for time by simplifying everything over there that I can, 800 times 0.02. Yep, 16, so 100 equals 16 T. Now I solve for T. Divide both sides by 16, and T equals 6.25 years. But something is a little weird about this answer. It's a little weird. All right. So if you if you asked your mom, um, hey mom, I know we have vacation coming up. Um, how far is it away? And she's like, it's 0.25 years away. 
Like, what would you say in response to that? What is open? Are you what? Can you, mind? like, yeah, like, have you, like, you know, gotten something confused with what I asked? Because to say something in 0.25 years doesn't make a lot of sense. So could we figure out how many months represents 0.25 years? 0.25 is how much of a whole? It's one fourth. So we know 12 months are in a year, so how much, if I were to divide that by four, three, three months. Okay, so this would be like a plus one if you guys could tell me six years and three months, all right? She says, yeah, you know, it's three months away. You're like, okay, like that's not too bad. Three months, that makes sense to us, okay? So that's why we would say six years and three months. It's just... With, with these types of problems, it's, you know, what is the answer that actually makes sense to us? All right, one more problem, okay? An example four now, um, at some point, okay, and it, and it is just the nature, and there's nothing wrong with, you know, taking out a loan. We talked about a mortgage, all right? Most Americans, the greater majority of Americans, don't have the cash on hand to pay cash for a house. So, debt while we want to reduce it as much as we can it is just part of life okay now going into debt to buy a violin what do you think no. is it a necessity do you need it to like put a roof over your head no. not necessarily but how many of you have ever wanted something and you had to wait and save the money anybody no. okay so how many of you, all right, so we've, we've wanted something. Now, when you become an adult, you will have options to either save that money and pay cash for it, like a $600 purchase. That's not a huge purchase. It might seem like a ton of money right now. In the grand scheme, it's not. Or you can take out that credit card and swipe it and buy it the same day. That's what we call an impulse buy. It's impulse decisions, okay? So this, this guy or girl made an impulse decision. And guys, can I tell you something? 15% is a pretty high interest rate. This person doesn't have a whole lot of credit, I guess, or something. I don't know. Okay? So I'm going to use my model, I equals PRT. All right? And let's read the problem. You borrow $600 to buy a violin. The simple annual interest rate is 15%. You pay off the loan after two years of equal monthly payments. How much was each payment? In order to determine the payments, though, you have to know how much money it ended up the final balance was. You remember what we did in example one? We had to first calculate the interest, okay? So what would be the principal amount? That would be the amount I borrowed. $600. What's my interest rate? My interest rate? 15%, but do I plug in a 15? No. No? 0.15, and how much time passed where I was paying that interest rate? Two years, okay? So I'm doing this to determine the amount of interest. 600 times 0.15 times 2. How much interest did I pay over those two years? $180. Ugh, okay. So it seems like a lot of money on 600, and it is. All right, so someone, let's look at this on, uh, from the other perspective. All right, if you knew, now this is a risk for you as the lender, but if you had $600, you're like, eh, you know, I don't really need it for anything, and you loaned it to someone, in two years, you could make $180, which 15% is actually, if you're the one making 15%, that's actually a pretty good return. But what if they don't pay? Then you're out the money, okay? So that's a risk. The higher the re uh, risk, the higher the reward. Have you guys ever heard that? Okay, just please, please kind of cut down the comments. Okay, guys? All right, I'm trying to get through this. Okay, so 15%. Um, so now, how much did you pay over the course of the loan? $600. So A equals, no, you paid 600 but then you paid another 180 So your final amount is 
$780. Does everybody see how I got $780? I borrowed $600, but then I paid $180 in interest. Pay attention. Okay. So now to figure out my, what did it say? My monthly payment. I must divide, not by two. I didn't make two payments. I didn't make 12 payments. I made 24 payments because it took me two years to pay off this violin. Hopefully the violin's still working. That's sad. Actually, guys, that happens. People will take out a loan for something like that's like a three-year loan, and before they can even pay off the loan, the item that they took out a loan for is like broken in, in the trash. You know, and, and that's the sad thing. Think about a credit card. You put an Xbox on a credit card, and then, you know, your brother gets mad and breaks it or something. And then you're like, oh, man, I still owe the money for the Xbox, and it's broken now. Okay? All right, so 780 divided by 24. How much is, this, uh, is the monthly payment? $32.50. So this is the last thing I'm going to say. Guys, there's a lot of really practical, like real world type of application here. Someone would look at this payment and say, well, that's like three trips to Chick-fil-A. Like I can do that. You know, that's no big deal. But that's the trap. Listen, guys, there is a time and a place for debt. But the trap that we fall into, listen, the trap that we fall into is we think I can do this. So this is no big deal. And we end up paying a lot more money for something that if we had just had the patience to save our money, then, then we would have been a lot better off. And I'm talking, this magnifies into the thousands of dollars that, that ends up getting paid in either credit card interest or interest on car loans when you, know, you buy a luxury car instead of buying a lesser car because you don't have the money, okay? So just kind of tuck it into the back of your mind. I know you're young. But there's a lot of really good advice here and lessons that we can learn from this lesson. All right, if you understand that, that's everything you need to know. And guys, we're done with chapter six. Yes. Yes.